Today on Animal Outtakes. Puppies! 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 We're on the campus of Southeastern Guide Dogs where these playful puppies will grow up to do great work as service animals. Tag along as we see all the phases of training for these amazing dogs. Sit. Stay. Hello and welcome back to Animal Outtakes. On today's show we'll be... Did you know we're out of coffee? Lou, you just interrupted me. And if you looked, you would have seen there was instant in there. What is this, 1972? Coffee wasn't designed to be ready in an instant. I went to Starbucks and got it pretty instantly. Are you two going to talk about coffee all day? Why, what do you want to talk about? I'd like to introduce today's show. Oh, oh yeah. What's the show about today, anyway? Well, today we're visiting the Southeastern Guide Dogs facility based in Palmetto, Florida. Oh, yeah. It's really, really cool. Do you know what a guide dog really is? Well, uh, I assume it's a dog who's like, okay, everyone, let's keep moving. There's a lot to see today. That's a tour guide. Mm, I feel like I'm on a tour of the hills of Columbia. This coffee is terrific. You're a terrible little butterfly. Bud, Lou! Oh, sorry, Marsha. So what do these guide dogs do? Well, these wonderful dogs perform a great service for people who can't see by acting as their eyes and helping keep them safe. Hmm. Imagine the challenges people with no sight must face. Can you just imagine? Well, just close your eyes. Now, wouldn't it be nice to know that there was a companion who could help you through that darkness? He's been wanting you to ask him to close his eyes since he got out here. Should I wake him up? Uh, actually, nah. Southeastern Guide Dogs has been training these special dogs since 1982 and has established more than 2,800 dog teams since then. So stick around as we look into the work that goes into training these pups for their important future job. <laughs> well, at least some animals think their job is important. <laughs> Did you know we're out of coffee? It's playtime for the puppies at Southeastern Guide Dogs. These little guys are about five weeks old and full of energy. They're getting their feet out, you know, under them and they're a little bit more coordinated. This is the age where they're sort of fearless. It takes a lot to startle them. So we expose them to lots of different noises and they just plunge in at this age. <laughs> they absolutely love those bottles, don't they? They do. <laughs> But this morning romp is about more than just having fun and burning off energy. This is part of their education. Obviously, other than just being fun, it's also getting them used to a different surface. It's getting them used to sounds. Sure. Um, because if you, if you withhold those from them, we find that later they're more sensitive to it. At this age, they just take it all in stride. There's also different surfaces. There's a hill. We don't have hills in Florida, so we create our own hills. Um, we also have steps for them to climb, and because um, these puppies are going to be riding escalators, climbing stairs. <laughs> They're just getting coordinated. Is this very beneficial? Is this Absolutely. something that should be happening for every puppy? Absolutely. Um, early education is so important. This is when their brain is forming, um, when they're really, they remember these experiences later in life. They're bolder, they walk on more surfaces, they're less afraid of people. Um, this gives them a reference library for their whole life. So what do you hope to accomplish at five weeks of age? Where, what makes them graduate to the next group? We want to see them starting to become more independent, less dependent on each other. Um, less needing to follow a sibling or follow mom. We want to see them exploring on their own, which these guys are clearly doing. Yes. Um, they get a little bit more independent. They're ready to, to change environments. That new environment includes a bigger yard, more playground equipment, and perhaps more importantly, new interactions. And they also start puppy hugging. They also start meeting more strangers. Up until this point, they've met volunteers and staff members. As they get older, then they start meeting the general public. So when we see that they're, they're confident and they're, they're willing to explore and they're willing to socialize, they're ready to move on. 
The next stage for these pups includes exposing them to different textures and surfaces. This trail that they are following mm -hmm. right now is so important that it's the different surfaces. We're on pebble, we're on rock, mm -hmm. we're on sand and concrete, we're mm -hmm. on mulch. Mm -hmm. This is all part of the training, right? Absolutely. Because you don't know nope. where they're going to be in Absolutely. their adult life. We never want them to, to hesitate because they're, they're not sure because they've never seen it before. We want to make sure they've seen as many things as, as we can get them on. And um, feel. And, and feel, feel it. it. Yep. Feel yep. it. We want to, we want to do every, every one of their senses, sight, hearing, smell, touch. We want to make sure that they get lots of exposures in all of the categories. We have 17 different surfaces that they can use. Um, and we want to make sure that they're, that they're not hesitating because of something we missed. These two brothers are almost ready to go home to puppy raisers. At 10 weeks old, they have learned how to wear a collar and walk on a leash. But there's a little more work to be done. They're learning about uh, different surfaces, different potentially scary noises on a walk. They're, they're really learning sort of how to interact with the environment a little bit more. It's a little bit more unpredictable out here. You can see even between the two puppies, one is a little bit more sensitive, one is a little bit more hesitant, he needs a little bit more encouragement. So we're working on building up his confidence before we, he goes home. He's trying everything, he just needs somebody to help him out a little bit. Um, his brother's a little bit bolder, he's a little bit more independent, and this helps us make, make a match with a razor too. This helps let us know who's the type of person that'll be best for this puppy. With around 250 puppies in the program at a given time, it's nearly impossible to say which ones will make the cut at this point. At what point do you know that you have a successful candidate here for uh, helping either the visually impaired or a soldier post-stress? We don't know until they come in for training. We don't know until they're actually here living in the kennel and, and working. We, can, um, we make a lot of assessments along the way. And occasionally we'll see a puppy who it's it's just not the right program for, but that's pretty rare. And they're usually uh, they're usually older than this when we make that determination. Yeah. We we send them home with it. We get a, give them a lot of training. We give them a lot of help. Um, we expose them to all kinds of things and and really try to build up their confidence when they're puppies. So they're still they're not total blank slates, but there's still some some room to work with. Still ahead, getting the puppies out and about in the world. Um, we can't do that here in the kennel, so that is vital. The importance of Puppy Razor, what you need to know if you want to help out. Plus, when we finally say that they are ready to go to their handler, then that's when we expect the perfection. From positive encouragement to perfection, how these dogs are taught to look out for their handlers. For thousands of years, we've been human's best friend. You've been through a lot, and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization, so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org. guide dogs in training have okay. reached 10 weeks Heel. old and have completed some Good early girl. basic training, it's time for them to leave the Southeastern Guide Dog Campus and spend some time with a very special okay. person, Okay. their puppy raiser. Recon. Good girl, yes. Good girl. Leslie, this is definitely the program that everybody wants to be a participant of. All the humans want this program, puppy raising, and yet this is the most critical part of it, the training. Absolutely, it's very important. And I certainly hope everybody wants to do this because we rely on our volunteers. Um, we have about 250 puppy raising volunteers um, who take these puppies into their homes and love them for about a year, teaching them 
the foundation um, obedience that they're going to need to become guide dogs. So it's critical um, that um, we have puppy raisers who are willing to do this for us. Leslie Shepard is the director of Puppy Raising Services. She says anyone can help mold the future of these pups with a few qualifications. First, you must be 18 or, if you're underage, you have a parent as a co-raiser. Recon is a guide dog in training, and Leslie is co-raising her. Another option if you don't think you can commit full-time to raising a puppy. Health care is provided either on campus or through veterinarian partners, but there is a financial commitment to these dogs. There are still, um, we're still asking our puppy raisers to provide the food for our puppies. Um, we ask that they crate train our puppies, so um, they need to purchase a crate, leashes, toys, um, things like that. A flea preventative, that's also something that we ask them to provide. Puppy raisers also need to be able to commit the time and energy to raising these dogs, which may start out as cute balls of fur, but will grow to be rather large dogs. So Leslie, could you have somebody who works the eight hour day, the five day a week, would they still qualify? Yes, they would. Um, as long as their employer um, agrees that they can bring the puppy to work because um, our puppies need to get out and about. Um, we have visually impaired people who work, so they need to learn what it's like to be in that kind of work environment. So that's not a you know disqualification if you work full time. Puppy raisers are responsible for not only teaching the dogs how to be trustworthy at home, but much, much more. And getting the puppies out and about in the world. Um, we can't do that here in the kennel, so that is vital. Um, anything that our, fut our guide dogs might encounter, um, our puppies need to have experienced that um, somewhere along the way. Now, they wear the special coat, mm -hmm. guide dog in training. Yes. Is this a coat now that is kept on them throughout their training so that when you are exposing them to different environments, going on the cruise, mm -hmm. they wear that so that everyone knows? Absolutely. Uh, once they have earned their coat, yes, whenever they're in public, they're wearing it. Um, so that no one, um, that gives them the public access that they need. And we're very lucky in Florida that yes. we have a state law that allows the same access for our puppies in training as actual service dogs. After a year, the dogs return to campus for more formal harness training. But they always hold a place in the hearts of their puppy raisers. It's hard. It's really hard. Um, what we kind of tell ourselves from the beginning is that I may want this dog and I may love this dog, but I don't need this dog. And someone else needs this dog more than I do. Um, she was bred and born for a greater purpose. And um, just like my children, um, I didn't raise them to have them stay at home with me forever and ever. I raised them to go out and do magnificent things in the world. And that's why I raise puppies. Forward. Once back on the Southeastern Guide Dogs campus, dogs like Jack Reagan begin more formal harness training. Jack has been assessed a number of times to get to this Good point. Ball. What are some of the Jack, assessment criteria that he Left. has already passed? Well, he has to go through a rigorous medical assessment. So they have to be medically perfect in order to make it through the program. And then they have to go through many um, behavioral, Jack, behavioral um, and temperament assessments. Um, so there's initial assessments and then we continually assess them throughout training as well to make sure that they can handle the unexpected. They can handle things different than the normal dog can handle and still remain responsible for their job and focused on working. Trainer yes, Jennifer Johnson will job. run through obstacle courses like Forward. this one with the dogs. Halt. In this case, Jack. Jennifer right. is teaching Jack Reagan to yes. keep an eye out for Forward. obstacles overhead. For instance, if a handler was walking down the sidewalk with their dog and there was a tree limb hanging over, the dog is taught to be responsible for the space above their head up to the handler's level so that they don't hit their head on it. Um, so what we do is we start very low with this contraption and we teach the dog to stop at it. Check! To stop at it, uh, we give a treat when he stops at it and then we gradually raise it up and up and up higher and higher and higher teaching him to have awareness and to look up as he walk, walks. Training takes several months but it's not work for these dogs. 
It's fun. It's all about uh, consistency. So you do consistency, repetition, um, and, and praising them. So you, you do the same thing over and over, and then you praise them for what they did well, and it becomes a game for them. It's really all about play, and, and when you make them successful and you set them up for success for it, uh, they love it. It's a, it's a process, um, and we, we build on the responsibility of the dog. So we don't expect perfection at first out of the dog. Uh, we expect progress. So we build on the responsibility that the dog has. We teach them more of the simple commands at first, and then we build and expect more and expect more and expect more as the training continues. And when we finally say that they are ready to go to their handler, then that's when we expect the perfection. And then when they go to their handler, we teach the handler everything that the dog already knows so they can become one cohesive team once they leave our campus. They build a trust um, on both ends of the leash. The handler learns to trust the dog and the dog learns to trust the handler. So in a few months, Jack Reagan will be one of the top graduates. That's what I see, yes. Left, left, find the curb. Yes, good boy. Up next. <laughs> you want to go visit? Yeah. Go visit. yeah. She'll let you do that all day. Do you have yeah, like three sure. hours or Sure, so? absolutely. Okay, <laughs> when cuddling can't be contained, the alternative careers for these amazing animals. Critical Vet Care is guided by the belief that companion animals deserve state-of-the-art medical care and a kind and comforting environment. The courage of our patients, the loyalty of their human families, and the devotion of our referral veterinarians inspire our vision. It is sustained by the contributions of our compassionate, knowledgeable, and dedicated staff and built upon a strong tradition of providing excellent health care for animals. To learn more, visit us online at www.criticalvetcare.com. And now it's time for the furry and famous Animal Outtakes VI Pets. Come on. Well, that was easy. Yeah. Well, today we're in Bradenton, Florida at Motorworks Brewing. And we happen to be in our beer garden. It's, by the way, the largest beer garden in the state of Florida. We actually saw her picture online, but it really kind of resembled a mugshot. And so as much as it was a cute Jack, I wanted to go see the dog. So when we got there, she was, we fell in love with her. And she comes to work every day and she's a trooper. She comes in and knows exactly where she's supposed to go. And she goes around, says hello. But this one and I have particularly bonded, so. She's with her mother pretty much all day. When, when she isn't with her uh, office mate, 
ready, the, the Italian, uh, miniature Italian Greyhound. The owner, Denise, her dog, and Reddy, they are office mates. They come to work with us every day and they play together around the brewery and the beer garden up in the office. I saw a picture of him online. I fell in love. He's nine years old. He'll be 10 in March. And he's actually considered a red Italian Greyhound. He is just my sweet pea. <laughs> Um, a couple years ago, we had an accident playing disc golf. Unfortunately, he shattered his little leg. Uh, we tried to do surgery to correct it. His little bones were so tiny, they couldn't really put him back together at that point. So they did have to amputate, but he has made a miraculous recovery. He still has the same personality, same Let's heart. Come on. Uh, he still jumps right up into my arms, runs around and plays, enjoys life thoroughly. There are certain times in, during the day when we bring her down and let her visit with the guests. They keep everyone on the staff just in high spirits and happy. It's just kind of relaxing to have them there for us throughout the day. We believe that animals just bring a calming effect and kind of bring, bring us all back to reality at times. She is just our everything as far as keeping us smiling and it's a good reminder of of what we have and how far she's come in, in coming from a shelter to owning a brewery. And so it's been really, it's really a neat thing and we wish that for every animal. Dogs are the best and they are there for you just as much as you're there for them. <laughs>
If I'm really at a point where I'm extremely agitated and I'm having trouble controlling my breath, my breathing, I'm feeling extremely anxious, I can ask her to give me a hug and it will help calm me down. It puts pressure on my abdomen, it slows my breathing, it, ra it lowers my heart rate, it helps my oxytocin, it's all the good stuff. Can we see Mazel do we that can, for We you? can try, okay. she's, she's still learning, but we'll give it a shot. You wanna try? Can you hug please? Thank you. And then I'm gonna help her get into position. So she should be nice and tight like this. Good job, Mazel. Good girl. Good girl. I don't know who's enjoying it more. Oh, you? me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely me. We'll be right back. Well, that's it for this week's show. We hope you have enjoyed learning about the guide dog training process and how these amazing animals are changing people's lives every day. You know, these dogs really inspired me. I want to do something to help people. So I want you to know, Masha, that when it's my time to go, I'm leaving you my eyes in case you need them. Ooh, I don't think that's such a good idea. What? Why not? I mean, can you just imagine? Join us again next week for another outstanding animal adventure. We'll see you then. <laughs> you rock me.